Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Miami Dolphins franchise. We have not won a game yet. We are 0-2 on the season, but we had a shootout last episode versus the Buffalo Bills where we saw a coming out party for Jalen Waddle, but it just wasn't enough in the end as Cole Beasley and also their other superstar receiver and Stephon Diggs absolutely destroyed our secondary. Here are the storylines going into week number three. Trey Waynes agrees with a deal to the Falcons. That is the only deal really so far in the season. I have seen Kareem Hunt floated around in trade rumors. I will keep you updated on that to see where he goes. But I do want to talk about the sliders a little bit now. All Madden is very tough this year. It seems like the CPU is very good at pass coverage. So I am trying out some sliders right for this game. And these are armor and sword sliders on uh, Operation Sports. Go check them out. They're usually used on all pro, but we will still be on all Madden using those. So we'll see how that goes. Here are the top players of week number one and two, Christian McCaffrey. And how about Patrick Peterson getting it in week number two with his new team in the Minnesota Vikings? And then Matt Ryan in week one in the NFC won it on the offensive side. Now, one guy I really want to get going is Jalen Phillips. I haven't been able to really find a true role for him yet. I've been uh, trying to rush him on uh, third downs, but it's just not working. So I want to, you know, speed up his development a little bit more and maybe getting him off the field sometimes and getting him in there fresh will help. So I decide to go into free agency and bring in a veteran and a Dolphins legend in Cameron Wake to kind of mentor him and bring him in. He is 39 years old, but he is still top 20 at his position in the league. That is amazing. But he will return to the Vikings. Welcome back. Now, one thing I also am going to do is I'm going to start getting some playing time to other receivers. You know, I have been happy with some guys and disappointed with others. Like, I really want to get Devontae Parker going. I haven't been able to get him the ball, to be honest with you. And I think it's because, you know, on the outside, it's tough to get people the ball when it's in man coverage, especially a guy that doesn't have any top end speed. Maybe I have to just throw him some 50-50 balls, but even then, I don't want to take that risk of throwing an interception because possessions are really, really valuable on all Madden. So we go up against Derek Carr. This is a doubleheader episode. We will go up against the Raiders in the first game, and then you know who they have, Darren Waller, one of the best tight ends in the game. He could play receiver if he really wanted to. 90 speed, 97 catching. He is amazing, and he's going to be a mismatch nightmare. One guy that has been struggling so far is the rookie Javon Holland. I want to get him going. I'm going to upgrade his zone because I do want to play more zone coverage, but it seems like zones are still a little bit weak on this game, so you have to play man more than zone, but I do like to switch up the play calling. I do use coach suggestions to call plays on both offense and defense. If they keep giving me repetitive plays, I do switch it up, though. So we're going to get to some quick highlights here in this Raiders game. Is here is Josh Jacobs getting going down the left sideline already on the first drive. He breaks a tackle and picks up a huge gain. Now they're at about the 26-yard line for a third and long. Here is Derek Carr throwing. Open man. It is Henry Ruggs. Touchdown. He beats the rookie Javon Holland. Like I just said, he has been struggling so far. That time in man coverage on a third and long. You can't. Let that happen. So 7 nothing here, and we're trying to run the ball with Miles Gaskin. He has been decent running the football. I definitely want to get him his first 100-yard game of the season. So here is Tua now, third and seven. The pressure does get to him, and he does go 0 for 3 on that drive, and it will actually be a 3 and out. I guess he went 0 for 2, I should say. So here are the Raiders trying to run the ball. Now, our game plan against the Raiders here was to stop the inside run. I know what John Gruden wants to do. He wants to round and pound and run the play action. But here is Josh Jacobs getting loose inside the 10. And now it's a first and goal here in the second quarter. Handoff. Jacobs again right up the middle. Easy touchdown for the Las Vegas Raiders. We are down 14 nothing on the road the Raiders have all the momentum so here is Tua now the pressure gets right up the middle it's a sack 
The left side of our offensive line has been absolutely terrible this year. And we give up our second sack of the game to Solomon Thomas. So we do punt the ball away this time. It's Hunter Renfro back to receive this kickoff. And Needham hits him hard. It's a fumble picked up. Jerome Baker, touchdown. Sometimes it's better to be a little bit lucky. And we got caught a break on that one. Needham, who is our fifth string cornerback, in as our gunner on punt. And it's going to be a 14-7 game before halftime. So a minute 10 left here, throwing across the middle. This is going to be Henry Ruggs again, tackled by McKinney, McKinney. And now that picks up a first down inside the eight. Here's a throw to the right side. Darren Waller fights for the end zone. We tackle him at the one. We back him up here to for a third and go at the three. Here is Jacobs, and he gets stopped. They call it a touchdown, but they're going to go and review this play. He wasn't even close to the goal line. And that one will allow them to settle for the field goal before halftime and going into half up 17 to 7. So here are the Raiders in the second half now with great field position here on this drive and they throw across the middle. Derek Carr 14 of 17, a touchdown and a interception. So here's a throw to the right side and that is a touchdown. And that one will be a score for the Raiders again, 24 to 7. We will have to come back in this game. So here is Tua now. Play action fake on the next drive. Throwing deep. And this time, he's got Hunter Long. Open for the touchdown. I won't call him Henry anymore. He gets in for the score. His first of his career. 24 to 14 here for the Dolphins. I'm looking forward to developing Hunter Long. Yes, I know I was messing up his name in the first couple of episodes, but we're getting it right here. That's an excellent throw by Tua. We're, we might start have to focus training Tua just to get that, you know, that accuracy up because when he throws balls like that, it's a thing of beauty. So here we are on defense now. Derek Carr with all the time in the world eventually gets rid of it. It's a first down. And I hate those plays where they have perfect protection, no pressure at all. We definitely got to fix that. Throwing to the right side, Hunter Renfro. It's too easy. It's a touchdown. The Raiders are doing what they want here in this game. So here is Tua now throwing across the middle, and he's got Will Fuller who can't hang on to it. I'm really looking for Fuller to get going as well. He had a touchdown last week. We'll see if he can, you know, start to get going here. As he's on a third and ten. Nobody open. We could have threw that one deep, just giving our guy a chance, but I just couldn't risk it. I was debating throwing that football. Instead, we take the sack. So now the Raiders have great field position. Under two and a half minutes left here in this game. They're going to run the ball here. Josh Jacobs up the middle, picking up a gain of about 12 yards. It's a first down, and now the Raiders are threatening to score once again to put this game way out of reach. Hand off. Look at the blocking and the vision. It's a touchdown. And our guys in the secondary, like Javon Holland on that play, I don't know where he was going. Josh Jacobs just hit the hole. 38 to 14 ends up being the final score. We start out this season 0 and 3 as Derek Carr did what he wanted in this game. Three touchdowns. He did throw an interception. Tua went 9 of 21. They just ran the ball. They kept possession. This is exactly what John Gruden wants to do in an actual game. He just wants to ground and pound run quick play action, quick passes, and he wants to get his offense going that way. Andrew Van Ginkel did get the only sack in this game, but it was kind of sad because, you know, we just need something, a spark to start this season. And just look at the time of possession. The Raiders, 19 to our 8 minutes and 51 seconds. So we come out of that game with some unfortunate news. Our Both of our left tackles are hurt with torn labrums. But then Bernard, Bernardrick McKinney is going to be hurt as well with an abdominal tear for the next four weeks. This is a huge blow because we really don't have too much depth at middle linebacker. Jerome Baker will have to step up, but I think that's a huge blow for us. And now we have to look for a left tackle. Now, I debated going into free agency, but... There's all older guys there and guys that I don't really, you know, want to, you know, just kind of take the time with right now. 
So I go to the trade block to see who is available, and there are a couple of guys. For the Arizona Cardinals, Josh Jones is available. He is a second-year pro out of Houston. He is actually pretty decent. I, I am looking forward to developing some type of lineman, and I think with the guys that we have, we have the worst offensive line in the NFL, hands down. And if you watch the preseason game in real life, you definitely saw that in week number one. I mean, their offensive line is just horrible. Brandon Parker is here, but he is number 42 ranked left tackle. And then there's Prince Tega Winogo, as I say it, but number 46 left tackle in the league. But I don't see his ratings as being good enough to really truly develop. So I go after Josh Jones. I think he is the best left tackle uh, that is available. They are looking for a cornerback. That's their number one need. And I go and add Jamal Perry. And he is a fifth year cornerback out of Iowa State. And I think at this point, he just probably won't play for us. Best he will do is special teams. So I go and offer him up. Both teams have a lot of cap room and they're not interested in this initial trade. So I decide to go in and add a seventh round pick. And then they agree to that. So we bring in Josh Jones, another left tackle to develop. We'll see how he does. Now we go into this second matchup and we really want to get a win here versus the Colts. Now we go in game planning and I said I was going to try to uh, train Tua a little bit, but I'm going to train Josh Jones. I at least want to train one of our linemen. I might actually ch change that to uh, to one of our other rookies. We'll see. I, I don't really know right now. Tua is probably going to be next to be added for a few weeks and we'll see how much he develops especially with his you know just how much he plays obviously he's a starter but just he gets more xp than everybody else i also thought about putting putting liam eichenberg there he might be a guy since he is a rookie and he is a right tackle i see in real life they're actually trying him at left guard so if he ends up being an actual left guard in real life i will switch his position to left guard and then uh try to look for a right tackle either switching josh jones over there or when one of our tackles come back from injury, trying one of them over there. We'll see what happens. I want it to be as realistic as possible. The right side of our line is actually doing good this year. Robert Hunt is actually the number 20 ranked right guard in the NFL, which is not bad. So I want to keep developing him. He is still pretty young, so we'll see what we can do with him. So let's get the second game of this doubleheader underway as we will take on the Colts. We return home. This time it's not raining. It is good weather here as they do take it back to the 18. Can Coach St. Pierre get his first win at the NFL level? This game we will cover in full, besides from the uh, Raiders game where we just showed some highlights. So Carson Wentz starts out with the ball. He's going to throw to the right side. Xavier Howard interception on the first play. How about that diving attempt? And what a way to start out this game. Tua runs out onto the field. Three touchdowns, two interceptions this year. We'll see what he can do in game number four. So we're going to try to hand the ball off. Started off early with Miles Gaskin. This is a handoff for a gain of five. I really am looking for a spark in the running game. Hopefully Gaskin can get going, and we'll see if Josh Jones will give us that spark at left tackle as well. Another first down carry this time for Miles Gaskin as we get it to the nine yard line. Here's a handoff this time from the shotgun. He has space and gets in. It's a touchdown. We have the momentum here to start this game. You know what? This is why I talk about the momentum bar. I said it a couple episodes ago. If the CPU would have done that, an interception and a touchdown, they would have had their bar all the way full. We have ours just about three quarters full. So here we are back out on defense. Here is Mo Alley Cox, who really came around last year, and nobody really, really expected it. And it's a first down for him. He's going to have a big second year at tight end. Here's a handoff this time up the middle, and that is a nice stop by Raquan Davis. Now, we signed uh, Sheldon Rankins in the preseason, but I want to give Davis a lot more playing time. When he gets in, it seems like he's doing well. But here is Naheem Hines down the left sideline. How did he break free? touchdown he just ran around the defense that doesn't make any sense our run defense has been terrible this year to start it out it is 7-7 here we go play action fake this time throw into the right side and that is miles gaskin as we do eventually pick up the first 
now at the 25-yard line. This is Malcolm Brown in the game. I definitely want to get more than one running back going, and Malcolm Brown is that next back in line. He picks up a gain of two yards. So third and eight. Here's a quick throw, and I think that was to uh, – it looked like that was to Albert Wilson, but it looked like the ball was actually thrown to the tight end. It was maybe just a bad throw by Tua. So now here we go, back out on defense. Here is Carson Wentz with a nice throw to Mo Ali Cox again. His second completion of the day goes to his tight end. Handoff this time. This time it's Marlon Mack up the middle, and our run defense just has to be better. We've already given up a long run in this one. Both running backs are doing a number so far. So now at the 20, this is going to be Wentz. He steps up, throws, and then that's going to be caught T.Y. Hilton. And he avoids the pass rush on that one. Throws across his body right on the money. And now they're inside the five. Here's a pitch play. Finally, we get a stop this time on, I believe that's Taylor. And he does get stopped for a loss of about seven yards. So third and goal this time. Throwing. Marlon Mack has it. But it's going to be a stop. And that is Jerome Baker filling in for McKinney. And it will be a field goal. 10-7 Colts. So here we are back on offense. Open throw downfield. Jalen Waddle has been showing up lately. He had a huge game versus the Bills. We'll see if he can replicate that again. So here is Gaskin this time. Handoff trying to get to the outside. Breaks a tackle. Does get pushed out of bounds for a gain of five yards. So we start the second quarter here. Handoff. This is Gaskin up the middle, and he does pick up the first down. As we get the ball to about the 34-yard line, we move the chains. So here is Tua now throwing to his tight end. That is Mike Kosicki who's got it. He's fighting for a contract as well. We are in talks with negotiations. We will see how that goes. And now we have a fresh set of downs here. Throw across the middle. It's Kosicki again who can't hold on to that pass. We threw it into traffic definitely on that one. But they will actually call pass interference on that play on Xavier Rhodes, so we get it inside the 10. So now we get it to the two-yard line. Second and goal, and off, it's a touchdown. Gaskin has another one this year, and he does get in 14 to 10 here for the Dolphins with six minutes left here in the first half. So our offense looks good to start this game so far. Can our defense come up with another stop after that Xavier Howard opening drive interception? Here's a handoff. This time, Marlon Mack breaks the tackle. He's going to take it for the touchdown. Our run defense is now the problem. We are giving up way too many long runs. This time, Marlon Mack does it earlier. It was Naheem Hines, and now we just need something. It is 17 to 14. I think McKinney being out is really hurting us so far, but here's Jakeem Grant with speed down the left sideline. He eventually gets pushed out at about the 39-yard line as we do have a little bit of momentum here. And now here's Tua back and onto the field. The pass rush getting to him, and he just has to throw this one away. So now across we'll the 50 now. Here is Tua in the pocket, throwing across the middle. Nobody to really throw to. Looking for Devontae Parker. I said I definitely wanted to get him going, but that one was incomplete. He was blanketed. We settle for the 56-yarder, and it is good. Barely over the crossbar, and it will be a tie ball game here with about four minutes left here in the first half. So here's a handoff this time. Marlon Mack, finally we get a stop, and that is Jerome Baker. He has been doing it all today. But he needs that second middle linebacker here for help. Third down and six. Throwing, and that is T.Y. Hilton beating Justin Coleman in coverage. Javon Holland comes over to help with the tackle. And it's a big first down. So here is Carson Wentz this time handing off on the stretch play to the right side. Inside the 20 now. It's a first down. Coleman on the tackle. And now here we go inside the 18. As they come out here with five wide receivers out there. Here is Wentz throwing open T.Y. again. It is going to be a first and goal here off of that catch. And now here we go with two minutes left at the two-minute warning. Here we're getting some pressure this time on Wentz, but he gets out of the pocket, does break a tackle and fall forward. And that was Howard in the last tackle. That is Coleman right there. As now they have it at about the one. Handoff, touchdown. 
that drive just looked so easy. <laughs> they just did what they wanted. Short throws, running the football. It's 24 to 17. So now we have a minute and a half to go. Here is Tua airing it out deep on the first play, and he's got Waddle again. He gets behind the defense, and when he does, you have to watch out. He's got game-breaking speed. And now we have it for a first down at the 13. We can use some clock a little bit now. Here is Waddle again for a second straight catch, and he gets to about the five-yard line. So we lose a couple on second down, third down, throw, and it's an open Gesicki. Touchdown. Both of the tight ends score here in this game, and that one will be a big-time throw by Tua, 24-24. to So now here we go, throwing across the middle. This is going to be a catch by Mo Alley-Cox, and they have less than 15 seconds to go. They call a timeout. Trying to get into field goal range to come out here with five wide. Here is Wentz, no pressure, trying to get to him. Wentz steps up. He's gonna just going to take off. He's got it to the 30, and he gets it to the 28. A big-time scramble is going to set them up with a field goal, and that is Rodrigo Blankenship in to kick the field goal, and it is good. 27-24 at half. We just cannot stop them on that final drive. So here we go to start the second half. Here is Carson Wentz throwing across the middle. He's got T.Y. once again, and that one will be a first down. Have I been calling Zach Pascal T.Y. this whole time? I cannot believe it. So here is Wentz throwing to the left side, and that is going to be caught, and that is Marlon Mack again. Both running backs are having a huge game in this one, Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines. So here is a handoff this time, and that one will be Mack, but this time he can't get back to the line. This time it's going to be a tackle for about one yard loss, two yards loss, and now here's a third and fourth throw, and it's tipped. And finally we get a stop. That was Eric Rowe we sent on the pressure. He gets his hand up and deflects it. So we do get a stop here to start the third. Here's a throw to the sideline, and that is going to be caught by Mike Gesicki on the sideline. Tua has looked good throwing on the run in this game. Tua once again throwing across the middle. That time it's Parker, and he can't hang on. You know, the thing about Parker is that I don't get him get it to him too much, but when it does get to him, he's got to hold on to these balls. Third and ten now. We line up here with three wide receivers and a tight end, and the pressure gets right in. Tua coughs it up in the Colts scoop and score. You need to take a look at this play. This is the rookie Eichenberg. Just take a look at the right side. He goes for the double team on the defensive tackle that time and allows the free blitzer to get right in for the sack. And just like that, we're down by 14. Here's a handoff this time, and it's Miles Gaskin who gets about a gain of five. And it looks like the Colts are fired up on the sideline, bringing it to a third and six now at the 42. Tua trying to buy some time, airs it out, and that is Parker who doesn't go up and get it. He did not put up any effort to go get that pass. That is a game-changing type of play. We're down by 14. you got to make it happen. Here's a deep shot, and it's a touchdown. That's what happens. We They find Paris Campbell, and it's now a 21-point game. Instead of Devontae Parker just putting his hands up and catching that ball, converting the first, maybe even scoring a touchdown, it would have been a 7-point game. Now it's a 21-point game. That's how football can change just like that. So back on offense, here's a deep shot. One man open. Jalen Waddle touchdown. We've seen this a few times now to start this season, and I think that Waddle is our secret weapon. But now that we're down by 14, I'm not sure it makes too much of a difference. We have to come up with some stops. But Jalen Waddle is having another excellent game. He already has a 200-yard game under his belt. So here we go back on, on defense. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is Carson Wentz finding his running back out of the backfield as we're now into the fourth quarter. Wentz throws on third and five to the end zone, tipped away Byron Jones. That time he was guarding T.Y. Hilton. And now here we go back out on offense here, 48-31. They had to settle for the field goal. It's still a 17-point game, though. 
So five minutes left here in the fourth. This is Tua under center, moving to the right side. He's got a man wide open, Will Fuller. Touchdown. We do eventually get our guys involved. That time it's Will Fuller, a busted coverage. We find the open man, and now it is 48 to 38. We're right back in this game. Down by 10, though. We need a stop at least. Here's a quick throw to the right side, and that is Mo Alley Cox, and he will pick up a first down. Well, I can see that we're kind of hurting with McKinney out because we can't cover running backs out of the backfield anymore, and that is a catch, and that is Jerome Baker trying his best out there, but he definitely is used to that help. Here's a handoff once again. Marlon Mack, and he picks up the first down, breaking a tackle in the hole. He's over 100 yards on the game, 125 over just 14 carries and two touchdowns as well. So Carson Wentz under center now. Looks like they're using some clock, and this one will be a handoff once again. And that one will go for about a gain of eight. Fourth and one. We call the timeout. They settle for the field goal. 51-38 now as here's a throw to left side, and that is tipped. The pressure is getting to us. Darius Leonard, I believe that was, on that tip, bringing it to a second and 10. The pressure is right there, and it's going to be another hit on Tua. And now third and 10. This time Tua throws wide open Waddle again, and he just overthrows him. That one would have brought it within one score. Now fourth and 10, one last heave. Devontae Parker, and it's going to be tipped, and that one will be the game. The Dolphins come up just short. It's just the little plays. Our defense gave up 51 points. I guess they didn't really give up 51 because we did have that strip sack for a touchdown, and that, I guess, 40-some points. What's the difference now? You shouldn't be giving up that many points altogether anyway, so... We come up with another loss, 0-4 to start the season. Three touchdowns for Tua, though. Gaskin ran the ball better than what he has been, but still not up to what I think he should be, only 3.3 yards per carry. Jalen Waddle with his second of four with 175-plus yards. He had a touchdown this one. Will Fuller did have that big play on busted coverage. It was on busted coverage, but we did score with him. Happy to get him going. Josh Jones actually did protect uh, Tua pretty well, but I still think our left guard situation is definitely a problem. We will have to address that. I'm not sure where we will go with that. And I want to evaluate all of our offensive line positions. We saw Eichenberg make a mistake. He's a rookie. He will make those mistakes. But who knows if he's really a right tackle. He might be that left guard, like I said earlier. We'll have to see. So, looking at the season stats so far, Tua, six touchdowns, two interceptions, a longer episode today, but I loved what I saw from Tua. Miles Gaskin, four touchdowns. He's at, what, I think 3.6 yards per carry. I definitely want to get that up just a little bit. I want him to be between sometime, somewhere between four and five yards per carry. And then Jalen Waddle leads us in receiving so far. He's had a couple of big games. He could be one of the leaders in the NFL if we keep this up. Matt Skura at center is actually having a good season. I haven't mentioned him. He has been blocking extremely well for us at center. And then we will have to see what we can do without McKinney. Uh, we'll see what Baker can do up the middle by himself. He was also our sub linebacker, so we'll have to find a new one for a sub linebacker. And we'll have to see how this team develops. We're 0-4, it's still very early in the season, but right now we are dead last. Dead last as far as rankings. We'll see if we can get going. There's a lot of season left and we'll see. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Appreciate you guys staying for the whole episode. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm about my pledge. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. They're like fall leaves in the back field. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quick to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She brainy but them jeans looking like.